Well, it's gotten cold outside, so that means that some of us are having cold start problems, including me. So let's dive into them today and see if we can figure them out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. And if you notice, Project Country Club's facing the other direction. Uh, what's up with that? Well, yeah, I've actually gotten the car out and driven it. We've got the Holly installed. We've gotten the TCM installed, the aftermarket TCM installed. The car is running. I'm in the process of doing some tuning and stuff. There'll be videos on it in the future, but for now I wanted to touch on a couple different things. A hard start issue. I'm having one on the Silverado with the cold weather. But before that, I think, uh, due to increasing pressure from our competition, we've had to go back and review our pricing structure. A lot of you know that some of our competition now is offering a whole year of access to their videos, and most of them are less than $100. In response to that, we're going to have to continue to give all of our videos away for free for your lifetime. Nothing we can do about that. Sorry, you know. Uh, but... In an effort to be more like the competition, I'm going to try and talk down to you guys a little bit more often, uh, comment about how much smarter than I am than you, and use tunes, uh, names like tuners to uh, you know, make myself feel superior to the competition out there. Yeah, you guys know that I'm not serious at all. Uh, that's the whole antithesis of what I stand against. I'm here to share information with you guys. You guys are sharing as much information with me. We're building a great community. We blew right past 13,000 subscribers. We're coming up on 14. Had almost 100 viewers in the live show last Thursday. If you haven't been to the live show yet, check it out. It's Thursday nights, 8 Eastern. And it's almost to the point now where I'm not fielding very many questions because people in the chat are answering questions for me. You guys are absorbing this information. You're getting to know your vehicles better than you ever have, and you are truly becoming your own tuners. And I'm just super excited to see this evolution of the channel, despite all the hate and vitriol that some other people might want to throw our way. And I understand, we're cutting into your bottom line, uh, but you know, maybe you can be a little bit kinder about it. That being said, let's dive back into uh, cold starts. What we're going to do today is jump in the Super Auto. It's been sitting overnight. It was well below freezing last night. We're going to set up a very simple log looking at the base parameters, fuel and spark, things like that, and see if we can figure out why during the crank and initial fire period uh, that it struggles. Once it warms up, everything runs fine, and that's generally the case because we are looking at different tables specifically for fueling, though there are different tables for spark at that period of time, but it seems to generally fall to a fueling issue. We're going to see if we can identify that issue, sort it out real quick, and get this thing starting a little bit better in cold weather. That being said, if you have not subscribed, take the moment to do now and hit that like button. That is the best thing that you can do because that's what gets these videos out and brings in all the new people, all the new faces, all the new information and suggestions as always, I do appreciate the suggestions. Hit up the comments down below if you've got questions, suggestions for future content, anything like that. And as I said, don't be surprised if you post a question if somebody else jumps in there and answers it for you. You know, I try to get through every single question that you guys ask, but a lot of times, I mean, I'm getting inundated with a lot of these questions and things like that. I will eventually try and get to you or do a topic on it. But if I don't, for some reason, hit up the live show on Thursday. That's a great way to interface directly one-on-one -on -one with me and the other people who are invested in this channel. So let's jump in the Super Auto and check it out. Okay, we're in the truck here. We've got our scanner pulled up. We've just got a few parameters. One of the big ones that we want to look at right off the bat is the wideband versus the uh, commanded ratio. Our AFR in this case uh, doesn't matter. Uh, because we want to make sure that we're getting the proper fueling during startup enrichment. So, that being said, let the wideband warm up, turn the key on, give it a little bit to warm up, and then let's go ahead and start the truck. See, we're running pretty lean. And that's pretty apparent there. If we go back through here and look at this after startup, it gets to enrichment and then it starts to lean out, and that's when it starts to struggle on the cold start. Okay, now that we know that we have an issue with going lean on this, we're gonna go in and look at a couple tables and see if we can't find tables that specifically deal 
with temperature and fueling compensation. So we've got two big ones. We got the cranking VE area, and, and, and underneath that in particular, we have the air temp multiplier, which is directly a uh, uh, charge multiplier versus air temp. So it says this is a multiplier of the air temp air charge temperature based on airflow and is used in the cranking air mass calculation. So this is one that we can probably bump up a bit to see if that helps. Then under fuel, we have the, the uh, EQ cranking ratio, which this one also is an ECT table. Uh, if we go and look at this one, it says commanded EQ ratio during cranking. Uh, but we're going to start with the airflow air temp multiplier. Uh, we're going to, man, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to multiply this thing by three, really get it big out there, see if it helps. And it's in mass airflow, which we're not logging right now. So I'm going to add that to the log after we get done writing this in to make sure that we can come back, double check against the numbers that we wrote in there to see if it made any difference whatsoever. Let me get this loaded up and we'll check it out. Okay, now that we've made that adjustment, we'll give the wideband some time to warm up here so we can get a good wideband reading during cranking. And here we go. Still reading lean. Did not seem to help. Let's scrub back through the data here real quick, see if we can figure out what's going on. And we're commanding 0.73, we're just not achieving it. So the question is, are we not achieving that because of our uh, airflow table? Because I believe we're getting past crank, we're getting into run, and it's taking it a while to get out of that area. So it might be something as simple as we're getting into part of something like the mass airflow table that we normally don't touch. This table needs smoothed. There we go. So let's look at where our mass air flows at. We're at 160.9 pounds. We're not logging frequency. Let's add frequency to our channel here. And we'll pull another quick log and see where we're at there. Okay, so whenever we started to stumble out here, we were getting down into the low threes, fours. Let's go ahead and go in and look at our tune, see if we can't fatten up our airflow frequency in the three to four range, and see if it makes a difference. Shift all this up, then we'll come smooth out the top end where we got some shifting. Let's blend that in and we'll try this out. We're still running a little bit lean, but as you can see, it's running a lot better now. So that's what our problem was. Literally, we had a spot of the math that we probably hadn't hit during the summer, spring, fall months, whenever we were tuning, that was causing us to run lean after crank. So we're gonna have to go back in, make some adjustments. If we come into our math EQ error, it should give us a better idea of where we need to make these adjustments at. And that's probably enough data. Let's go ahead and stop it right there. We're gonna copy it over just like we would with a normal math tune. Come in here. Do our pace special. I'm just gonna multiply this by all the way, see where it bumps up. And didn't really make it too ugly. We got a little bit of a peak there and it flattens out. So I'm gonna fill that in from 4,200 up. So if we come over here to 4,200 and we come up to 2,800, let's extrapolate that, make it a little bit flat. Maybe even do a little bit right there. That should give us a decent launching off point here that we can test this out. 
Make sure we're disconnected in the scanner. Okay, now that we've updated that area of the math table, let's go ahead and crank this thing up, see how it responds. We're still a little bit lean out there. It can use some more adjustments, but it's no longer struggling. It's not going super lean. We're actually below one lambda on the richness side. So honestly, we're doing pretty good. Let's do a wrap up and we'll talk about a couple other things that we saw. Well, as you saw, we were able to track it down to just a fueling issue. We were running a little bit lean because we were touching on a portion of the math chart that we had not tuned previously. And this often happens whenever you have severe cold weather. That's why a lot of you guys are seeing cold weather start issues. And so you just need to go in, log the specific parameters. You'll notice on the Gen 5s that the timing goes really negative. Don't get hung up on that. That's because it's a torque-based platform. If you're on a Gen 3 and a Gen 4, though, and you're seeing negative timing on crank, try and get that up a little bit. Uh, the Gen 5, the way it works, it doesn't seem to affect it nearly as bad, and so it's not worth necessarily chasing that down. Just get your AFRs dialed in properly from the get-go because that's what's going to kill you almost every time. If you're commanding... Uh, it's startup enrichment, which is always very rich. You're going to see 0 0.6, 0 0.7. That's not odd during startup to see that enrichment rate. And then it has to stay rich until things get warmed up. So if you're not seeing your wideband reading that enrichment rate, you're running lean. And the thing's not going to want to run. It's going to want to stumble. It's going to want to die. And so those are some of the things that you can try. But down at the end of the day, it generally turns out that we just need to tune our base tables again to make up for the changes in weather. That's not to say that this shouldn't uh, work whenever the warm weather comes back in because we're starting in a completely different area of the math sensor curve or on the VE table because of the density of the air has changed. The mass that we are bringing in has changed. So that being said, hopefully this helps some of you guys out. If you have any questions, problems, things like that, as always, post them up down in the comments below. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button. Check out tuning101.com. That's the link that brings you straight to our YouTube homepage. And then check out goatropegarage.com. That's where you can go to get things like merch. Check out the Patreon, all that other fun stuff. That being said, I've got other stuff to get working on, so I'm going to get out of here. But remember, ABT, always be tuning.